Hey guys, it's L Supersonic Q here after what seems like a really, really long break that I wasn't intending for. I'm back with finally a new video, um, which kind of coincides really well with what I'm planning for for the future. So yeah, I was kind of in a lot of debate on what video I really wanted to put out, which was why you guys haven't really seen anything in a few weeks. Um, because I, don't, I just want to put stuff out that you guys are going to watch, and when I compare the in-depth series views to like, you know, the quick draws or super sketchings... Uh, the in-depth series are so much higher, but I really needed to find, you know, a more type of inventive way to show off my clay. Uh, and plus, on top of that, I'm saving some quote-unquote in-depth series episodes for uh, later on in March. And right now, in February, is that time in my video period where it's like, okay, you know, December and January was kind of like the remnants of 2012, and now we haven't really started the 2013 season yet because of the chalk and my YouTube anniversary, and all that other stuff, is in like March, late March, April, and we're in February right now, so I'm like, oh, what am I going to do? But after I thought about it and stuff, I decided that it would be best to make this video, which, due to lighting and stuff, had to be postponed a couple days, um, but this would set up future videos, especially in the case of my YouTube anniversary, um, about the history of my clay and the evolution of my clay, and kind of all that stuff. So I thought a really good first video to do in that type of series would be the evolution of my Sonic Clay figure, then and now. So pretty much it's going to be like an in-depth series, and actually in this then and now series, I'm planning on having a couple more installments um, through in-depth series episodes and some real-time sculpting and stuff. But for right now, we got like an in-depth series thing going on. So I'm pretty much just going to, um, like I said, it's going to be like an in-depth series video. I'm going to go through my clay or my Sonic sculptures, I've picked nine of them out. I have made some more, but I thought these guys were, you know, I, I, I obviously didn't want to just show you guys all my Sonic models for no rhyme or reason, so I felt like these guys are really the evolution points, or some of the evolution points in my clay, so uh, that's, or in my Sonic sculpting, because Sonic has been with me pretty much since the beginning of my art. I can really say that Sonic is the reason why I'm so involved into art and everything that I am now. It's just like, yeah, he's just, I don't know, it's just it's really hard to explain. But anyway, so yeah, I want to talk and show you guys about the evolution of my Sonic Clay. So, I'll just start. So, we're going to go all the way back to the beginning. All the way back those, um, what is it, probably maybe seven, eight years ago now or so. I've been sculpting for ten years at this point, I believe. But Sonic wasn't the first things that I sculpted. So I'm going to say it was, it was probably about seven or eight years ago, with what I like to call my Wolf Sonic. So yeah, really, really crude concept here going on, but again, this was so long ago. So I really didn't have very good dimensionals and ways to kind of use the clay to make it look like the character, because here you can see... I have the snout thing going on here, but it's coming out of the face, it's not flat on the face. But I'm like, well, how am I supposed to get the nose sticking outward, you know, with a flat snout? I didn't understand that concept back then. Um, and I just overall had a really hard time trying to sculpt the head, because it's like, it's just really deformed. I do have the spikes on, on the back here, but again, they're really flat, and they're not really sticking outward. And I only had three, because... Well, the Genesis Sonic game was the very first video game that I ever played, as well as the first Sonic game, obviously. And from that title card, he had three spikes. I didn't really know he had more, and I'm like... I remember distinctly, I tried to make them off the side of his head, but I'm like... Well, that doesn't look right with this, you know, snout coming, you know, this way out of his out of his head. So I had to put them on the back, even though um, it didn't really... It looked a lot better than the side, but it didn't really you know, go, go with the rest of the body. Um, he actually broke an arm, or an arm has been broken off, because, like I said, this is so old, and I'm so happy I can, I still have this, because there are a lot of first models, like my first Luigi, he'll live down in infamy forever. I just can't find him. I have my first Mario, Wario, and Waluigi, but I can't find my first Luigi. So I'm, I'm really glad to have had him, this Sonic. Um, the arms and stuff are kind of just, like, basic. I mean... Again, no fingers or anything, um, but I guess they do look pretty on model. And I used a different color blue because this was at a time where, you know, I bought that 30-pack color sampler, and it was pretty much whatever colors in there I had to work with, and after I used all the shiny blue, um, you know, I needed to use some other kind of blue. And to conclude, I simply 
took some red clay and made the shoes because either I didn't realize that Sonic had stripes on his shoes or my skill thing abilities just weren't that good at the time and I couldn't have managed to um, sculpt his shoes to the likeness that they actually were. I will say though that the eyes, I'm pretty impressed with how I actually got most of the curves of the eyes right, despite the pupils being kind of like in the middle and not so much on the side, you know, like how he looks. But overall, for a model made quite some time ago, <laughs> I'm pretty happy to still have this. It's, it's overall not that bad. You guys will see that elements from this model definitely made it into other models. And I remember too, just a fact about this guy, Back when I was playing Sonic 1 for the first time, and after I had made that clay model, because like I said, a lot of the reason why I became a sculptor is because I just wanted those physical items of the in-game characters and stuff that you couldn't really have. And at the time that I started sculpting, you couldn't really go to the store and buy a Sonic figure like you can today. So, um, whenever I was playing Sonic 1, I would often get this clay model and bring it into, into the room I was playing it in, and just like, you know, put him on the, on the table or whatever, uh, next to the Genesis, so when I was battling Eggman and stuff, I'd be like, oh, come on! Come on, Sonic, I sculpted this, like, I got the Sonic clay model right here, give me some good luck, and then most of the time it worked, so. I don't think it actually got me through the whole game, though. But that may have been a later point. So, alright, that was Sonic number one. So, this was, moving on, this was not so much the second Sonic that I sculpted. However, it's definitely a turning point, and still early, early enough, where you can see that it's not really perfect, but it's not as, you know, obscure looking as that. And it's this Sonic. So clearly, there are many differences between this one and that one. Uh, this one does look a lot more cartoony, and it does look more like Sonic. Uh, so here's what's going on here. We have the whole shape of the face, which is getting a lot better. It's more circular as opposed to that one kind of being, um, you know, cut rigidly uh, on the sides of the face. Um, the ears, however, are becoming a lot smaller and for some, well, for some reason, they're closer in the middle of the head. I probably just did that for the sake of, if I made them too far apart, they would have been sticking outward rather than, like, upward. Um, but we do have the three spikes in the back here that look a lot better compared to that one. They're actually cut a lot better. And like I said, there's no rigidness of the head on the side. Um, then we got the snow, which is probably the most distinctive difference, is it's actually flat on the face this time. There were so many models I made prior to this one that were around the same time as this one. Uh, I'm going to say this one probably came a, f a few years later. Um, but there were a lot of them that I made around the time of that one where the snouts were sticking out like that. and Because I, I just couldn't get the flat concept down. But this one definitely flat concept down. And I actually got a distinctive smile. I don't think this one has... Oh, this one does have a mouth. But it's kind of, again, just kind of on the, on the bottom there. Not really... Well, I... I it makes sense for, for for this one with the whole snout being out, but it you know you, you can't really see it from that side because of that. But this one has the smile down, and it's more of a Sonic smile than that one I'd say because I got the little like you know little line up there. For some reason, like this chipped off. Like if you can see, it's kind of like uneven there. It's because the smile chipped off. How does that even happen? Um, I got the nose on the side, which is a first. Again, being able to actually distinguish between the the flat and the outward stuff and just overall more proportionate body he's a lot smaller i don't really like these like his socks right here i didn't put any socks on that one actually but this one because they're just kind of oversized but i think that was just because of either my lack of red or just not really caring and we have the stripes on the shoes and overall like i said just a more accurate presentation of sonic because those ones none of the colors are right actually and this one a lot of the colors are right or all the colors are right pretty much so yeah, although I will note, though, that these earlier models, and I guess I didn't point, I meant to point it on this one, um, they didn't have any back spikes, strangely enough. I don't know if that's just because these ones broke off. I I think I may have put a tail on this one at some point, and it may have just broken off, but like I said, for a lot of them, I remember not putting on back spikes. Um, so to, to my memory and how accurate my recollection is, but I, I know this one I probably didn't. Hey, the phone's ringing. Um, yeah. I was trying to avoid the phone ringing in this video, but I guess that didn't happen. Oh, well, we're almost at the end of this part anyway. So, yeah. Um, there is turning point in the Sonics. Alright. So, now this next one is, again, a few years later than these two. And this is definitely a distinguishable... Alright, I'm getting this sculpt down really well. And 
That's Sonic a la SA2. Oh, I gotta love that SA2 stuff. Alright, so pretty much what's going on here is a combination of these two now. We got the whole, like, outward nose with the nose being on the front of the face. And we got the flatness of the front of the muzzle. So that works really well there. I'm still work. I, I still have the concept of these of the eyes pretty well down, like the whole shape. Except just the pupils aren't exactly um, like as high as I want them to be. Just for my for my pickiness now, you know. I mean, you guys know how Sonic his eyes are kind of weird. They're just not to that point yet. But still, uh, the ears are coming apart a little bit more. And this one actually did lose some spikes, but I'm starting to form the spikes, like, um, I guess, cones, you could say. Um, they're starting to kind of, you know, slope down a little bit more. This is, I think, the f one of the first Sonic models. I'm going to assume... The first Sonic model I still have that's this old, that actually had remnants of six spikes going on, because it was SA2. But again, this one doesn't have any tail this one does not look like it has any kind of tail it may have had back spikes at one point but they're not there anymore so again still haven't nailed that concept of getting all the spikes down um but the shoes i'm starting to evolve the shoes and actually you know make them so they're not as flat like if you guys notice those shoes are wicked flat these ones are you know more noticeable so he can actually stand on them better because that, that guy's wobbling back and forth if you can kind of tell right now he probably can't but um he doesn't stand very well and that's probably because the shoes don't really act as supports. Um, <laughs> and I just think it's kind of funny how this one's kind of like bleeding down his his legs. It looks kind of weird. But, and aside from that, I just, to be picky, his arms and hands are a little bit bigger than I want them to be. Um, but I guess that kind of comes with the artwork because, like I said, this was based on SA2. And for some reason, I just kind of have these stereotypes of how to sculpt, um, you know, characters from certain games. I guess for, well... To use a recent example, I'd say if I was to sculpt the Sonic Heroes Sonic, I would focus on the face a whole lot because that was kind of the game that we saw in Evolution and Sonic. If you guys remember on the on the uh, cover of the block, it said all new Sonic, you know, and that was just distinguishable to me. So I guess back then I thought, oh, the, you know, the kind of large limbs of SA2 and because of the Dreamcast graphical style, even though I played it on GameCube, um, you know, just kind of appealed to me more so than everything else, and that's why I sculpted them bigger than I probably normally would. But overall, we're getting a much better concept of Sonic down in these models, because, yeah, we're improving. So, I'm going to call that the end of part one. I was kind of planning on this being a really talkative um, few parts to this episode, because, like I said, I, I want to give you guys a really, you know, kind of rich history about why, about, you know, the evolution of this stuff. So, that was cool. Part one. If you enjoyed part one, then stick around for part two. And I'll probably have three parts because I have nine clay models in total to show off. Um, like I said, I didn't want to pick a whole lot. So uh, this is the end of part one. And if you guys enjoyed, then stick around for part two and three. So thanks for watching ML Supersonic Q, and stick around for part two. Finn.